A patient of mine asked me uh, recently about medical ID bracelets. Uh, he's on uh, blood thinners and he's a, an avid cyclist. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, that probably makes a lot of sense for that individual. Um, he's had several uh, wrecks on the bike. That just happens when you do a lot of biking. And if you're taking blood thinners, I think that's a, a good thing to do. Now, this is my son's uh, medical bracelet. He has a uh, tree nut allergy. So, <clears throat> as you see, this one's interesting. Uh, it's unlike most of the others on, that I saw that I have images of. It's on the inside. So you're not, although it's clear that you have a medical bracelet on, it's not uh, uh, broadcasting your personal health information all over uh, everywhere that you, you go. Uh, we'll talk a little bit, you know, I thought this would be a simple, quick, 10 minute uh, uh, preparation, three or four minute uh, video, but I seem to be talented at complicating things. Um, <clears throat> let me introduce myself and then we'll get into some of the details. Uh, Ford Brewer, PrevMed, uh, preventive medicine, uh, heart attack, stroke prevention. That's why most people come to see us. But then after they get there, they start realizing this same stuff prevents uh, the biggest causes of disability, strokes, dementia, uh, heart failure, and even cancers. So... Um, <clears throat> Uh, come let us help you out. So <clears throat> if you look up um, medical ID bracelets on Amazon, they're fairly inexpensive. Again, most of them have the information there out on the outside so people can see it. Um, for some of us, that's a big deal. For, for others, it isn't. Uh, most of us. Anyway, <clears throat> My first thought was, I'm not sure why I would give an opinion on that. I'm not really an expert in that area. Uh, and I'm not. However, I do have some experience. Uh, I used to be the medical director of an EMS, uh, this EM, EMS, uh, Okaloosa County, in the panhandle of Florida. I also uh, did a lot of training in medical emergencies in the emergency department at Charity Hospital in New Orleans. When you think about that, this was 1986. I was actually there in 1982. So, yes, I, I've been around for a while. <clears throat> now, let's talk about uh, medical emergency IDs quickly. These are not to be confused with medical alert systems. I'll explain that later. Uh, the reasons for medical emergency ID, well, <clears throat> um, Medical allergies, and I have allergies in quote, medication allergies. For example, you can have allergies to penicillin. Uh, Ramipril, which is something, and the ACE inhibitors, which is something that we use a good bit. Um, it's arguable or debatable whether or not the big problem, angioedema, is a true allergy. But people need to know, uh, emergency providers might need to know if you have that angioedema with Ramipril. Blood thinners, as I mentioned earlier with the patient that asked me the question. Bleeding control for tr trauma and surgical procedures. For example, a motorcyclist or a bicycle hobbyist on Plavix or Xarelto. Hypoglycemic uh, medications, such as insulin or the sulfonylureas. Uh, maybe metformin. Uh, metformin doesn't cause hypoglycemic episodes, but it certainly makes it harder for you to dig out, as I've uh, demonstrated myself uh, personally. Environmental allergies as well, such as bee stings or nut allergies. And again, that's my son's. Um, he has a nut allergy, and he did say it was fine for me to uh, demonstrate that on this video. <clears throat> So here's what the patient asked me about. It's called EPIC. As you see, these IDs are sharp looking, uh, simple and very stylish, but they have that medical cross on there. So 
that part looks good. They also have some new tech here. You disconnect them and they plug them into a USB port. It says it's easy for first responders. Responders are trained to look for these. Um, all you have to do is connect it to most any device with a USB and it starts to spit out some basic information regarding what medications you're on. I'm not too big a fan of that. When you look at this picture and you realize uh, it is control of the situation is a major problem for emergency medical transport personnel. If they're trying to run a code, they often have just pure chaos going on outside. And even when they're in the truck, sometimes it's worse because you've got three people trying to work on one patient and um, it's not easy to uh, take that medical emergency bracelet and then find an, a, a device that you can plug it into and get a good reading. Uh, to me, maybe a little bit too complicated for the basic information you need in an EMS uh, environment. So I'm voting for, yes, use them, but go with the simple things. I'm actually considering getting one of these um, for reasons I mentioned earlier. Now, <clears throat> I said uh, this got a little bit more complicated than I expected, and here's why. Uh, I started looking up, if you look up medical ID or uh, medical emergency alert systems or medical ID bracelets, consumer reports and reviews, you start getting into entire medical alert systems. And the medical alert systems are have quite a few uh, characteristics that they need. For example, it works for, uh, for a user's specific disability. For example, if someone has a stroke and paralysis on one side, they can reach the button. So these are alert systems which will uh, alert emergency medical personnel that someone has fallen. Uh, you know the old commercial, help, I've fallen and I can't get up. Those systems have been very popular for uh, adults to buy them for their older parents or people who have disability. Um, again, several other things to look for in this. It offers a choice of neck, uh, a, a neck band or a wrist band bracelet or both. It includes help buttons that, uh, uh, that can be wall mounted near, near a floor. It offers multiple choices for whom to contact has a battery backup. The base station can be contacted from anywhere. The company has its own monitoring center instead of being contracted out. And the monitoring system has been certified by Underwriters Laboratory or another uh, type of certification system. So again, these get a little bit more complicated than you might think. Thank you.